So, John. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna, I, I, you know, I'm a little bit psychic. You, you're going to ask me <laughs> why I got interested in this stuff. Yes, right? I am. <laughs> so, so, how did well, you get interested in this? I, I, I don't know. I think there's so many parts of me that moved move in this direction. I mean, mm. I, I suddenly realized, I'm 80 this year, and I suddenly realized about two days ago, I was talking to you guys, uh, and I began to find life very boring. Mm. <laughs> Not my own life, but the life of the world around me. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm kind of bored with a lot of it. And I think this stuff gives me a new lease of life, a new lease of interest, mm. because I think there's nothing more important. There's no, no question that is more important than is there an afterlife. I mean, it just yes, changes you everything. You bet. And yet it's something that's just not spoken about. If mm -hmm. I brought this up as a British dinner party, there would be embarrassment. Mm. You know? Benighted John. Well, yes, Paul, what is he talking about, mm. this medieval old clown who used to make mm. us laugh? You know, what is he talking about? The answer is the most important thing, and I think that something does go on, because the reason you and I know each other so well is that we used to meet at Esalen, mm -hmm. Big Sur in California, once, uh, once a week for about nine years with a group of other people, including one or two other people from your place here, mm. And, and discuss survival. And at the end, I came to the conclusion there was something going on. Mm -hmm. But I think what's going on, I have no idea, but I think something's going on. And if people say, well, that's a bit woolly, isn't it? I want to say, look at quantum physics, which is the best description we have of our reality. And you find particles that affect other particles simultaneously mm -hmm. at huge distances yeah. apart. One particle affects another particle simultaneously. Mm -hmm. um, and it appears sometimes that things move backwards in time. Well, if anybody said that normally, the people would come with the flapping white coats, but mm -hmm. they don't because they're quantum physicists. <laughs> so, yeah. so we believe them. We don't know what it means or anything, but the answer is quantum physics is deeply worrying. Um, I think Niels Bohr said that when you approach quantum physics for the first time, if you're not shocked, you didn't understand it. So if the reality of quantum physics, which is the best description we've got of this life we live in, is so strange, why should uh, an afterlife question like that be straightforward and simple? Mm. So I think something's going on, but I think the problem is we don't really have much of a clue. This is true, and a lot of mainstream scientists actually uh, ridicule us for making these kinds of connections, not being quantum theorists ourselves and so on. Yeah. And there's some justice in that, I have to say. It's too easy to make those kind of links. Arthur Kessler even made a joke about it. That mm -hmm. The argument is basically there's, there's this weird stuff going on in psychic research. There's this weird stuff going on in quantum mechanics. Maybe the two are connected somehow. But it really does go further than that. The, the quantum world is much more hospitable somehow to these strange things than the, certainly the Newtonian world. Which, you know, were explained an enormous amount for 350 oh, yeah. years, you but bet. now there's some things that it doesn't explain, yeah. and the new vision quantum physics does. Yeah. So the idea that, it's, that the explanation is going to be very straightforward is inherently mm -hmm. ridiculous. No, I agree. Yeah. And, and it's really important to emphasize that uh, we're not trying to overthrow mainstream science. It's great as far as, it's a fantastic human achievement, it really is. And it's easy to lose sight of that. It's just that it doesn't explain everything. everything. We have to expand it somehow in order to accommodate these additional phenomena. You know, when you come to evolution, it quite clearly explains almost everything. But if you suggest maybe it explains 98% of it, and mm -hmm. there's 2%, they'll get cross with it. Oh, yeah. And I don't think that's a very sensible attitude. Mm -hmm. Why couldn't there be some other small element yeah. in there? a teleologic element that, mm -hmm. uh, that, that actually speeds certain processes. Mm -hmm. But if you say so, it's like, 
you're naughty. It's it's medieval Inquisition again. You know, exactly. it's heresy. You're not allowed to say I mean, that. Tom Nagel wrote this wonderful book, Mind and Cosmos. He's a very distinguished American philosopher of mind. Oh yes, things. Nagel. Yeah. And he was basically uh, run out of the profession practically by mainstream critics for oh, and saying Stephen Pinker of, eviscerated oh, yeah, him. Stephen I, Pinker. I read that book no and comment. I thought this is such an interesting. Mm -hmm. Deeply, yeah. deeply interesting book, and then you find people attacking it really yeah. quite viciously. viciously. And it is this business about you know. Ta uh, uh, Mark Twain said, "We have two great things in America." He said, "We have freedom of speech and the good sense not to practice it." Um, <laughs> it the extraordinary thing is, there are so many things now that you cannot say in right. what's supposedly a free society yes. because they're heresies. Yeah, let me uh, say a little bit more about this. I mean, we're, we're talking here mainly in the context of science. Yeah. But the fact is that this worldview, this kind of Newtonian worldview, is basically the received opinion of opinion elites throughout the advanced civilizations. Mm. It's captured our educational institutions, our media. Mm -hmm. It's everywhere. You can't escape from it. And anybody who raises a hand to say, maybe there's more, is going to get slapped on the wrist, like you said. Yeah. Educational institute. It's penetrated the humanities. The humanities are being vaporized by the increasing impact of mainstream science, and classical science. The extraordinary science. thing is, it's totally contrary to science. Because science is not a belief system, right. it's a method of inquiry. Yes. And if you say, well, you mustn't inquire into those things, it's not science anymore. Mm -hmm. So that. <laughs> Excellent. Well, Excellent. Good. That was fun, wasn't it?